Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for UK, the UKV, Icon and GM charts have a look at the risk of snow showers through Monday as we are seeing some very cold air moving through this weekend. Now it is pretty chilly out there at the moment but the properly cold air will be moving through from Sunday through to Tuesday and there is the risk as the coldest air arrives through Monday afternoon overnight into Tuesday we could see some snow showers potentially even quite widely for the south and the east. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to be too disruptive at this stage, but some of the runs today, specifically the GM, has quite a lot of activity indeed, and you couldn't even rule out a bit of a dusting of snow for some through Monday night. Now, of course... That high pressure system that's giving us those easterly winds is going to topple. So yes, snow showers around, some very cold conditions for a couple of days. But as the high pressure topples, temperatures will rise ever so slightly and it will uh, cut off any shower risk at all. And then, of course, we're looking at the risk of that high pressure moving up towards Greenland and putting in north or northeasterly winds. Now, we're seeing a lot of uncertainty again from the models today. The GFS is now looking like the most confident model, whereas yesterday it was wobbling quite significantly. The ECMW which was very confident yesterday is now wobbling today so we're seeing a lot of up and down from the models we'll have a look at the gfs the eastern bf the gm but also the uk mass office run and the icon run because i do want to look at those two runs because we normally don't look at them because they only go out to day seven so we can't have a look at sort of the longer range pattern but day seven is pretty much the point where the models at the moment are starting to diverge so it'll be very interesting to see what they're showing with their broader evolution at day seven. And of course, after that, we'll have a look at the ensembles to see what the various models ensemble forecast is looking like. So do remember, if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see, can see there are still a few showers around at the moment, but most of them are near the coast, if not offshore. A few showers still sprinkling down the east. Uh, again, we didn't think these were going to exist a couple of days ago, but they have. Uh, and you can see they are generally quite light and patchy as the wind is veering more to a northerly now. But that is just temporary as the high pressure builds in. By this evening into tomorrow, it will be an easterly and then a flat easterly as we head into Monday, where we will draw some very cold air, which is now sitting much further eastwards. And the cold actually looks like it's going to intensify as it approaches. Coming across the North Sea, that's where we could see wintry showers starting to develop. But today, temperatures are down towards average, if not actually starting to touch below average. You can see widely, we're seeing darker blues and even some lighter blues indicating temperatures down towards the low single digits, but nothing too spectacular at this stage. You can see further eastwards across parts of Germany, Poland, in towards Eastern Europe. It is well below freezing and that is where our air is coming from. Now, we're not going to see this extent of cold at this stage, but we are going to see pretty cold conditions indeed as this does start to slowly move eastwards. Now, if you have a look at the latest UK feed to see what it is showing over the next few days, you can see there is showers around through today, but they will mostly fade away. And you can see it is coming in from the north as the high pressure builds in. But through this evening, those showers and any cloud will start to move more from the northeast, and eventually by tomorrow will veer more easterly. Now, still, we're looking at rain showers at this stage. As the air is cold, it is below average, but it's not quite snowworthy yet. Dew point still slightly above freezing, and the upper air temperatures are around the minus 3 to minus 5 point. But through Sunday, the colder, much colder air will start to arrive, and you see more wintry showers across parts of Scotland and even these showers across northeast England even though they are broadly showing rain still could start to have a bit of, of a wintry flavour associated with them through the rest of Sunday still reasonably dry but turning a lot colder temperatures only three four five degrees in the day if not a bit lower than that and the fuel like temperature will be colder as well and overnight temperatures will drop widely below freezing as we head into Monday, it's looking like the coldest day of this easterly wind. Showers inland now starting to turn widely to snow, but again, they don't look too widespread yet. Through the early hours of Monday, we could see the first indications of a few snow showers near the southeast, again, falling as snow, especially further inland. But their intensity and their widespread nature could increase quite substantially through Monday afternoon. Still a few showers around, but nothing too crazy yet. And through Monday afternoon could be a lot of wintry showers, a bit of rain mixing in there. Again, perhaps falling during the peak of the day could be a bit of a wintry mix, perhaps. 
But nonetheless, showers pushing in. But through the evening, as the coldest air arrives, look at that, the snow showers suddenly from around 6pm to 9pm, don't take those timings too literally, but roughly in the space of a few hours, goes from very little to quite widespread and potentially even quite heavy, especially the further south and eastward you go. They do progress westwards through the evening, even getting into parts of southwest England, Wales and the Midlands perhaps, before slowly moving out into the Irish Sea, and potentially starting to impact parts of the proper of Ireland there through Tuesday morning. Now, the reason for this is because we've got a very cold pool of air at the upper air temperatures. You can see very cold pool of air moving westwards. And it's this cold pool of air against the relatively mild sea, sur uh, uh, sea surface temperatures across the North Sea. Big temperature contrast allowing shower clouds to develop. Whereas previously, yes, the upper air temperatures are cold, but they're not quite as cold and not quite as unstable. So it's really that cold pool. And that cold pool has been intensifying over the last couple of days, now minus 12 degrees at 850 HP. One of the coldest air masses we've seen in a number of years, um, just from the 850 HPA temperature level. Definitely, we're going back a couple of years, maybe. February 2021, perhaps, is the last time we saw something this intense. We saw a very cold easterly wind move in, but even then, I don't think that was much colder than minus 12. Maybe it was only minus 10 or minus 11. And of course, beast in the east, we saw it get down to, I think, minus 18 in a couple areas. So it is a very cold air mass, very localised and small, and moving through in about 12 to 24 hours, but nonetheless could bring the risk of some snow in the far southeast. Beyond that, if we just run to the end of it, still showers around as we head into Wednesday, but more turning to rain and very light and patchy as we do slowly see milder air sink southwards in the higher pressure. But of course, the surface still remaining fairly cold as we have a bit of an inversion taking place as that cold air gets trapped. If you do just look at the snow depth, again, not expecting anything significant appearing here. And you see, yeah, very little appearing at all. Uh, but that is expected. Again, the UKV is normally pretty pessimistic with its snow depth. Uh, other runs are a lot more optimistic. Um, but there is the risk of a sprinkling of snow, especially as it's falling overnight, where ground temperatures will be around freezing. So we'll have to just wait and see. But definitely a big upgrade from yesterday. And it'll be very interesting to see what it produces again this evening or tomorrow. If you do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see through this afternoon, generally average to below average, around the 4 to 7 degree mark. Overnight tonight, temperatures widely below freezing, especially further north and westwards towards the centre of the high, lighter winds, allowing that air to cool down and then you can see as we head into sunday afternoon even cold only three or four degrees for many or even colder than that so real big chill coming so if you feel if you think it's feeling a little bit chilly today it's going to be a lot colder tomorrow and then even colder into monday already by 5 or 6 p.m temperatures dropping down towards freezing across many central and northern areas and overnight widely below freezing there and then into Monday afternoon, some places not getting much above freezing, especially across the higher ground. And even across the far south and east, where we have that coldest air mass moving in, maybe one to three degrees at best. And then rapidly overnight, those temperatures dropping below freezing, widely down towards sort of minus one to minus five degrees. Tuesday again, not getting much above freezing, maybe one to three degrees at best again. And then as we head overnight, could see pretty, the harshest frost perhaps there widely minus one to minus five again and then as we head into wednesday still chilly but slowly rising as we are seeing that high pressure topple maybe three or four degrees and that'll be the same as we head into thursday but again could be quite a harsh for frost as we head into thursday morning for the far south as we do see again cold air getting trapped at the surface so you can see it's going very cold for a couple of days turning slightly milder towards wednesday thursday but still pretty chilly and still below average as the high pressure topples and as it reignites and pushes northwards then we could see the floodgates open to some even colder air originating from the arctic now, I do just want to quickly show you some other precipitation charts, the icon of the GEM. Again, I have picked these out. Uh, some runs are showing no snow showers, some are showing less than the UKV or similar. But I wanted to show you the icon and the GEM as they are both showing perhaps slightly more shower activity, just to show you what could happen if the stars align. Now, as we head through Monday afternoon, showing perhaps some streamers starting to appear even by the morning. UKV hinted at it, but didn't have anything too significant. This is for the far southeast, and then showers really intensify through Monday evening. And look, really quite a few showers, and potentially even a bit of a Thames streamer there, where we see 
perhaps even got some quite intense snow right along the River Thames, added by the moisture um, coming in from uh, the mouth of the river. It does allow those showers to intensify a little bit more, but it does require an exact east northeasterly wind, so we will just have to see. But regardless, as much activity as the UKV, if not a little bit more, as these snow showers spread westwards. Now, the GEM is, yes, a low resolution chart, so perhaps it is overdoing it slightly, but it really ramps up those snow showers through Monday. Again, snow showers picking up through Monday afternoon, and then really quite some heavy snow, perhaps, overnight in towards Tuesday. Again, most likely from streamers and from a large area of showers, but that is incredibly interesting indeed to see this intensity. Um, of winteriness, widespread nature of winteriness. Again, it will be showers, and there's not going to be a wall of snow like this is appearing to be. But nonetheless, incredibly interesting indeed to see this from the GM. I do just want to have a look at its upper air temperatures, and again, you can see a very cold pool, and some of the other runs are not forecasting that, and that's perhaps why they're not showing as much winteriness. Um, but yeah, very interesting indeed to see um, the GM here and the East and, uh, and the Icon. Sorry. Both showing so quite high shower activity as we progress through Monday into Tuesday. Could be some surprises into Tuesday morning if this does come off. But of course, we will have to see. Now, of course, I do want to concentrate on the longer range as it is still still up in the air to a certain extent. Still pretty confident it is going to turn colder, potentially much colder. But exactly how it does evolve, timings and intensities still a little bit up in the air, as I said. The GFS yesterday was... Uh, a bit of a wobbly run, really. But you can see today, easterly winds coming in. That's where we are very confident. And then the high pressure gets towards 168 hours and progresses northwards. But this is pretty much where all models get to. High pressure ridging towards Greenland and cold northerly winds starting to try to push in. But this is where models start to diverge in the days following this. Now, the GFS yesterday did bring high pressure towards Greenland, but the Atlantic broke through, and we did see westerly winds take over. Yes, some colder snaps, some cold rain on the back edges of lows, but nothing substantial. Here, high pressure gets into Greenland, holds off any Atlantic low pressure systems, and pushes in a proper cold northerly wind for about a week here. So it goes intensely cold for about five to seven days, but eventually the high pressure loses out, and it does flatten, turns very cold as the high pressure moves in and then eventually uh, said so about a week later from when the cold air first arrives we do see more of a westerly flow so perhaps not quite as sustained as blocked as it was showing a couple of days ago where it was showing perhaps weeks of very cold conditions which was pretty unrealistic but it is showing it a good five to seven days of pretty intense cold and potential, potentially widespread wintriness with this as well, given the low pressure heights associated with this system. So yeah, it will be very interesting indeed to see if this does come off, but a complete reversal from what it was showing yesterday, where it was wobbling significantly today, has no problem getting that high pressure up towards Greenland and pulling in a very cold air mass indeed. The minus 10 ice firm consuming most of the country, and you can see that on the temperature deviation here, um, very cold temperature deviation indeed. Purples and darker blues moving in, showing you how cold that air mass will be. Again, we zoom into the United Kingdom, look, minus 11 to minus 12, taking over the whole of the region, and overnight temperatures widely below freezing. In daytime temperatures, not getting a much above freezing either. Now, if you compare it to the GM, which did show a bit of a west-based NAO yesterday, and actually today it's done something very similar. So perhaps it's a bit of a, a bias the GM has here. Again, high pressure building up towards Greenland. This is where models start to diverge at day seven. It does push in that northerly wind, and it looks very similar to the GFS. But the high pressure starts to migrate even further northwards and westwards, and this is where we potentially get a west-based negative NAO, where the high pressure is more towards the western side of the Atlantic. Now, what this means is the coldest air, instead of going towards the UK and Europe actually goes out to the centre of the Atlantic. Now the GM still turns us cold and essentially very wintry. We could even tap into this very cold air, but it's not quite as distinct and not quite as guaranteed of cold and wintry as the GFS was showing today. So again, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is a slightly different pattern and would allow the Atlantic to break through easily. Again, you see the Atlantic hasn't got a lot of energy here, so it probably would take it at least a few days for its energy to gather. 
But when it does move through, it could actually go snowy if the block still holds off the uh, the jet stream from pushing completely in. So a different pattern, potentially even a more snowy pattern, but not quite as locked in cold pattern, especially in that medium range. Uh, as we could see, a lot of that cold air spread more out into the Atlantic. So we will just have to see, but it's very similar to yesterday's run. Definitely still showing a cold pattern, very cold pattern indeed, but perhaps not quite as guaranteed as the GFS would. If we do have a look at the ECMWF though, if we get out to day, uh, day 7 where we do see that uncertainty, look, already at day 7 the high pressure is not quite getting towards Greenland. It's building over the top of us, and it's kind of sinking in towards Europe, and then developing a bit of a westerly flow. Yes, it does pull a northerly wind in for a time here towards day 10, and would go cold, if not very cold, for a couple of days. But by no means is it a blocked wintry pattern, as that high pressure at sort of day 5, day 6, struggles to get towards Greenland. Now, again, I would be very pessimistic of this, simply because, as we'll see for a minute, both the Icon and the UK Met Office run are showing that high pressure getting towards Greenland, no problem. So at this stage, we can't discount this run, but I do think it is a bit of an anomalous run, and I do think the Eastern WF is having a little bit of issues with recording this um, and forecasting this at this stage. But of course, cannot discount it at all. Perhaps the Eastern WF knows something that all the, runs, uh, all the other runs are discounting, but we will just have to see. If we do compare, as I said, to the Icon run, this is getting towards day 8 here, and you can see the high pressure is building towards Greenland, and we are starting to pull in a northerly wind again, exactly how it does evolve, we can't say for certain, but it is for sure substantially different to the east of the UF with that high pressure building towards Greenland, so at least it would have a much higher chance of pulling off that northerly wind, and if you look at the UK Met Office EU run, which allows us to get out to day 7, again, big block up towards Greenland and northerly winds looking like it's about to move in in the coming days. So both the Eastern OF, uh, so yes, the Eastern OF is a bit out of the sort of out of the general pack with both the GFS, GM, Icon and UK Met Office run having no trouble getting that Greenland high going. Yes, GM drifts it further westwards. We can't say exactly what the Icon and the UK Met Office EU run does yet, but they still get that Greenland high in which the East WF does really struggle with. So would yeah have a little bit of a doubt on that East WF run indeed. If we do finish by looking at the latest ensembles, if we look at the latest GFS back on board with quite a sustained cold spell here, a good seven days plus of cold weather there. Again, we saw a lot more scatter yesterday, still a little bit of scatter, especially in the longer range, and definitely a rise in the longer range, but that is to be expected. The cold weather isn't going to last for forever. Uh, yes, definitely looking like a sort of a five to seven day cold spell, maybe longer, maybe slightly shorter, if we saw something like the Eastern UF evolve a little bit more or something in between but GFS definitely pretty confident here of a cold pattern lasting perhaps from the 14th all the way to the 20th 21st maybe slightly longer from some of the other runs and precipitation increasing as well which increases the likelihood of snow you can see it is very cold at the moment so you see that one that cold pool moves through early next week and then does go slightly milder but really just about towards average before we see that plunge once again one of the big indicators of the dew points widely around freezing or below freezing, which will mean over the course of the next couple of weeks, most of the precipitation falling out of the sky will have a high chance of being wintry in nature. And the two meters temperatures not getting much of a five or six degrees. Yes, could see a five or six next week, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday, but Beyond that, generally we're looking at one, two or three degrees for the next couple of weeks, at least the next few days guaranteed. And then as longer term could be even colder because the pattern the longer term is coming off the back of this cold spell we've seen now. And of course, is going to be perhaps slightly more sustained, allowing those temperatures at the surface to cool down even further. Now again, just want to have a look at the ECMWF, because not only the operational run is having a wobble, but the ensembles are as well. By no means is it completely flipped, there is still quite a high uh, majority going for colder pattern, perhaps still about two thirds, but there is about a third now going more around average, if not slightly above average, which does include the ECMWF definitely in the shorter term. So perhaps the ECMWF is getting a bit more pessimistic, I wouldn't say it's completely gone from the colder prospects, but definitely has shifted quite substantially again if we look at the midday run yesterday it had shifted slightly milder again but still perhaps slightly colder than it is this morning so yeah we'll just have to see hopefully these three effort actually comes back on board with the other runs and we actually see some more consistency again 
as I said, it, at the start of the year, it's pretty typical with these sort of big pattern changes and showing big blocking weather, which is out of the ordinary uh, for the general westerly flow that we normally see. The way it is normal to see the models wobbling a bit and disagreeing quite substantially around that day 7, day 10 range. But we will just have to see what happens with it. Of course, we'll have another update out tomorrow. And of course, if anything just changed this evening, I'll probably put a YouTube short out. So do check that out uh, as we'll have a look at sort of the midday and 6 p.m. runs. But it's still looking quite a high chance of a cold, if not very cold, spell in the longer term. And now a guaranteed chance of a cold spell in the short range with potentially the risk of some quite heavy snow showers, potentially in the south through Monday to Tuesday. And of course, I'll have another video out tomorrow regarding that as well so anyway thanks for watching hope you have enjoyed make sure you wrap up warm over the course of the next few weeks because whatever happens it is looking pretty cold indeed at least the short range most likely the medium and long range as well and i'll see you again for another video soon